So we've discussed a lot lately how ships within the Expanse defend themselves, so I figured today we could take a look at exactly how they move around, and maybe look into how propulsion works within the Expanse. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoy this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. Now, we hear a lot in the Expanse about a single form of propulsion, the Epstein Drive, but there's actually other ways that these ships use to get around as well, so we will cover those too. But we will start, of course, with the big one, the Epstein Drive, the drives that make the Expanse possible. So what is an Epstein Drive? Well, an Epstein Drive is a nuclear fusion-based rocket engine, if you will. It uses nuclear fusion to generate heat, and that heat generates exhaust, and that exhaust is accelerated through a channel using magnetic coils to propel the vessel forward. Now, the effect that that would produce is greatly exaggerated in the show, and that's why a lot of people have said that the Epstein drives are wildly unrealistic, and arguably the most unrealistic thing about the show, but in my opinion at least, as far as lack of realism goes, that's pretty good compared to other science fiction. Still, the Epstein Drive provides the basis for propulsion in most ships within the show, and obviously the books. The Epstein Drive itself is actually a more advanced modification on an older nuclear propulsion engine. This modification was made by Dr. Solomon Epstein right around the time of Martian independence. In fact, it is the sale of this technology to the UN that allowed Mars to become an independent power within the system. But its historical impact aside, Epstein Drives became the cornerstone of interplanetary travel within the Expanse, and nearly every ship intended to travel from one planet to another within the show or the books is powered by an Epstein Drive. For fuel, Epstein Drives seem to use little pellets of nuclear material. They are then fired into a spherical chamber and detonated in the center to maintain a chain reaction. It's this reaction that generates the heat that drives the Epstein Drive forward through space. But the Epstein Drives aren't the only drives we see utilized by ships in the Expanse, so let's talk about some of the other methods of propulsion we see, starting with other forms of nuclear propulsion. We see other forms of nuclear engines pretty commonly on things like torpedoes utilized by the UN and Mars. This is likely because of the sort of longevity of a nuclear engine. These torpedoes likely would have incredible range and would be relatively efficient. However, the trade-off is they'd be more expensive than something like chemical engines, which I'll talk about a little later. We don't know a ton about these types of nuclear engines, but like I said, they are present on torpedoes and really not much else. But while the inner planets are using nuclear engines on their torpedoes, a lot of the belter factions are using chemical engines. So let's talk about chemical engines. Chemical engines would be sort of the great grandchildren of the rocket engines we see today. They use chemical reactions to generate heat. That heat is then sort of forced through a nozzle and out a like engine shroud, and that pushes the rocket engine forward by the sheer force of the expanding gas. These engines would be relatively cheap to manufacture compared to nuclear engines, for example. However, they would have relatively limited fuel capacities because they would burn fuel at a far faster rate. I think it's also worth noting that it kind of looks like we're seeing something like a chemical engine on the L-type dropships utilized by both Mars and the UN. In fact, I would imagine a lot of these smaller vessels, really tiny things like dropships and those containers we see used in the final battle during Season 6, are powered mostly by chemical engines. But there's another method of propulsion that we do see used by several ships within the show. And I'm not talking tiny ships, I'm talking large ships, things like the Corvette-class frigates, for example, and we actually see these used a lot. And these are rotational control thrusters, or RCS thrusters. This is actually something utilized in real spacecraft today. These thrusters use a highly pressurized gas that is simply released out a valve to provide a short burst of thrust. These are often used, in real life at least, in docking maneuvers with, for example, visiting vehicles to the International Space Station. However, in the Expanse, we see them used in a wider variety of situations. Whenever a ship needs to turn around, for example, you can see these little jets of gas that are likely reaction control thrusters turning the vessel. We also see these utilized in docking maneuvers and a lot of other fine maneuvering aspects of vessels within the Expanse. Now, across the board, while these may all be obvious choices to put on something like a starship, it's worth noting that some of these drives and propulsion methods were used in rather surprising ways. For example, most space stations within the Expanse would have had correctional thrusters. These likely would have been either fusion nuclear engines 
or more likely chemical thrusters designed to just adjust the space station's position if it drifts out of where it is supposed to be. On top of that, we know Epstein drives were used to spin up asteroids to build colonies on. This is how places like Ceres were able to exist at all. So overall, while the weapons in the Expanse may be awe-inspiring and fascinating, they are not nearly as crucial to the spacefaring civilizations we see in the Expanse as the propulsion methods utilized by spacecraft. But another aspect of the ships that we see in the Expanse that is actually very scientifically plausible is their artificial gravity. And if you'd like to learn more about artificial gravity within the Expanse, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I want you to let me know down in the comments whether you think the Epstein Drive is totally out there and completely unreasonable, or do you think it's a reasonable sacrifice to make to, from realism to be able to have the setting that the Expanse exists within. And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in The Expanse, leave it down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.